in rural New England in the 18th, and certainly for the first half of the 19th century, the sole means of heating a building was wood. The Shakers realized in early days that the efficiency of a wood-burning stove, which did exist at the time, was far, far in excess to that of a fireplace, which in actual effect transmitted most of the heat it generated to the outside. The Shakers, though, felt that they could design a more efficient wood stove than was currently available. It's important to note that by 1830, the Shakers had, had decided to use almost exclusively wood-burning stoves of their own design to heat not only the retiring rooms, but the, the, the rooms of worship and the dining rooms. The method of venting the exhaust gases from these, these stoves was incorporated also into the original design. The stoves, though, are easily portable and could be removed for cleaning or completely during the summer season. With the possibility of, of this in mind, they designed their own forms. The original forms were made of wood. These, these forms were taken to a foundry, and there, there were several in the area. And the components that were to be made of cast iron were cast and delivered. These delivered pieces of cast iron usually included the fire base plate, the fire box, and the door. The hinges, the latches, and most times the feet of the stove were made by Shaker blacksmiths. Most stoves have an individual signature to them based on the blacksmith and his decision as to how the stove needed to stand, to open, and to close. Most of the wood stoves at the time were very crude and inefficient. Most were top loaders as opposed to the horizontal load of a shaker stove, and very few were as airtight as the shaker stove was. The efficiency of the stove, from my experience, and I've, I've, I've used a shaker stove for a number of years, is sometimes understated because of the small and compact nature of the stove. The shaker wood-burning stove was designed to work at a very, very low air inlet setting so that the small capacity, wood capacity of the stove did not burn through quickly, that they did not have to keep feeding logs into the fire to keep it, to keep it working. The ability of the stove to generate heat when, when worked to full capacity would not allow a person really to be in the same room with a stove. The possibility of, of making, making a room overly hot is certainly within the realm of, of the capacity of the stoves. Another aspect of the shaker stove that, that is often not considered is that the exhaust heat generated by the stove should not be expelled as rapidly up the chimney, if you will, or the central flues in this case, as possible. That's why you will see in historic images and drawings that the shaker stove was oftentimes placed in the middle of a room or against a far wall with the exhaust piping carrying over to the other side of the room where it would join the central chimneys allowing for a long run of basically heated radiator. The shaker stove is a modular unit. It can be disassembled oft times into three pieces and is easily removed and cleaned and stored when not in use. The exhaust pipe also was made of tin, a virtually weightless component that could also be taken out of the room, out of the building, cleaned, stored for winter use. The stoves were also 
also used for other purposes than to, to heat a room. They were also used for purposes of heating other objects, such as irons. And this was done by either taking what was normally a flat surface in the top and cutting a well out and depressing another cast piece into the top of the stove. The irons were then set into this well and a tin cupola was placed over the irons to keep them hot at the ready. There were a number of large shaker stoves also made with canted sides that had a protruding shelf on these sides that the iron could be set against and therefore transmitting the heat to the iron. Another thing that the shakers came up with was a feature called a superheater. The superheater was just another two pieces of cast iron that channeled the exhaust from the rear of the stove up across the stove again, exiting at the front of the stove. This was just a chamber that was a drop-on feature to the top of any existing shaker stove. But it allowed for a far greater efficiency and use of the heated gases. In each room that you would find a stove, there would usually be a small wood box. And at the base of every stove, there was usually a, a, a small container that held tinder. The stove, for all its merits, did not usually burn overnight. So that the first thing in the morning, it was necessary to take the, the glowing coals, if you will, to get some tinder in there to, to spark the flames to again ignite the stoves. As efficient as the stoves were, they commanded the use of voluminous amounts of small split wood. In the community here at Hancock, it is believed that there were 22 barns dedicated solely to the storage of stove wood for the purpose of getting the shakers through one winter. Mm -hmm.